This is the Game Boy game, Big Too Small, a new Game Boy game that came out in 2021 by MD Steel. So this game kind of randomly popped up on uh, the subreddit Retro Game Development or Retro Game Dev. I, I checked it out. I was almost immediate. I was immediately blown away by how impressive this game is and how fun it is. So the first thing that really stood out to me was uh, the the level of polish in this game. Yeah, I've, I've worked on games before, including I'm trying to make a Game Boy game, and just getting just getting a game implemented is uh, enough of an accomplishment on its own. But adding things like you know a title screen, background music, a story, characters, dialogue is really really impressive to me, and to make it all look really good in a complete package. And on top of that, to actually finish the project. Oh, that, yeah, the more I looked into this game, the more it impressed me. So to begin with, uh, the gameplay. The gameplay is uh, it's a puzzle game, a uh, tile-based puzzle game. Um, it's, uh, it's a fairly original idea. I haven't seen it before. I haven't played too many, too many of these kind of games, but it was new to me. You control multiple characters and try to get them to an end goal. And the puzzle comes in uh, how to arrange the characters. It's kind of like a really, really fancy, uh, complicated take on Voxel. Uh, I think that's putting it too simply, but it's pretty easy to pick up on. So the gameplay is original for a Game, a game Boy game, at least. I haven't seen it before. Uh, it's fun. It's uh, easy to pick up and understand. Uh, even if it isn't, the, uh, <laughs> the characters in the game do a good job of explaining how to play, which really impressed me. Uh, the graphics. The graphics are really good. So in the Game Boy game, it's very important to have high contrast. You need to be able to look at the screen and tell where things are uh, very quickly and easily. You need to be able to tell what's a background item, what is a foreground item, what you can move, what's a sprite, what the different sprites are. All has to be able to be distinguished really quickly on a fuzzy, whatever, green and white screen uh, that's also very tiny and not backlit. It's a, it can be a serious challenge. <laughs> Many Game Boy games make one of two mistakes. They'll either overcomplicate the backgrounds, which can look really fancy and nice, but it's really hard to see what is what on the screen, which is bad for gameplay. It can look pretty, but it's a uh, bad gameplay. A good example of that is Donkey Kong Land, the first one. The opposite of that is making a Game Boy game with a background that is just pure, just blank, which is super easy to read, but... <laughs> really ugly to look at. An example being uh, Turrican or the Star Wars, some of the Star Wars games for Game Boy. They're just plain white backgrounds. Or Tetris, for example. Just plain white background. Um, this game does a good job of having uh, easy to distinguish uh, foreground, you know, the layout of the level. It's got really pretty uh, backgrounds, the way the trees look, the rocks, the items you need to collect. I'll look really good and clear and easy to understand. Uh, the main game sprites look good, they're easy to distinguish. Got a dark gray elephant, medium gray mouse, a uh, white and light gray goat. Everything's really easy to read, looks really good. The music in the game is, I've heard them before, I think at least some of them are just uh, traditional tunes, which is great. <laughs> it's a great way to, to uh, get some nice music in your game. Uh, it's pr uh, implemented Pretty, pretty simply, um, but they get the job done. It's not music, how would I put it? It's probably not music I'd listen to like on my music player on its own, but I didn't find it annoying at all and it was uh, nice to listen to as I was playing the game. Uh, the sound effects are <laughs> really cute, which match the game, match the gameplay uh, well. The presentation is what really got me. The developer doesn't just throw you into the game and say, here, Good luck, which was a big problem with many games in the past. And they're reading the instruction manual or something. But no, this game has, uh, I wouldn't call it a story. It's, uh, hey, I'm hungry, help me get some food. But the characters, you know, the premise is set up. Uh, you meet the characters one by one. Oh, one thing that really impressed me was, so I've only played the first world in the game, um, which I guess is about 7% of the total game of, uh, I think uh, the developer said around 40 levels. The first world in the game 
is uh, almost every level introduces a new gameplay mechanic. I assume that can't continue for the rest of the game, but it wouldn't surprise me if even more gameplay mechanics uh, are introduced. Even if they weren't, it's already incredible just how much is uh, going on in this simple puzzle game. And they're introduced one by one, which is outstanding for the player to not get overwhelmed. They all build on each other to make more and more complicated puzzles. And it's all presented in a way that's really cute and fun and engaging. In addition to all that, <laughs> this game is made in assembly language, which I think is incredible. Just like the way, uh, or very similar to how the Game Boy games of old were made, um, in my opinion. What you get in this game rivals well, I mean, I think it's better than many uh, officially released Game Boy games and rivals stuff Nintendo put out for the Game Boy. I was uh, really excited to f find out that uh, this game was is coming out on a physical release and I got my pre-order copy and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll post another video when I get that. But anyway, the game is open source and free for anyone to try out the source code and uh, the ROM are linked in the description of this video, and I hope you'll check it out. I highly recommend it.